Hey folks! Hi, it's Van Jungbeck again and today I want to show you the gear that I'm using because this is a question that's often asked and maybe I can also recommend some gear for you if you want to start with Gypsy Jazz if you're a beginner and I think this video will probably help you because questions that are asked a lot are like can I start with my normal Western guitar with my normal acoustic guitar is it also possible to play it with a nylon guitar do I have a, to buy a new guitar first which pick to use stuff like that well let's start with the pick usually in gypsy jazz the pick can't be bended it should be very thick or actually thicker than most picks that you probably know when you played rock or pop music or electric guitar this one is a pick that I played or I'm still playing it's a Wegen Big City Bluegrass. Wegen is pronounced W-E-G-E-N. I think it's a Dutch brand, I'm not really sure. And this one is very, then it would be called Wegen. I don't know. So this is a Wegen pick. Maybe it's also American, I, I really don't know. But this one is very good, I play this a lot. You know, it's got some holes in here, you know, to prevent if you have sweaty fingers, that can be an advantage. I don't know about that, I have dry fingers all the time. So, and this one is very cool, it sounds very nice. I will also demonstrate that. Let me say first, when I now demonstrate the picks, all picks that can't be banded will sound very similar to you, I think, because um, actually the sound of every guitar player comes from more from his fingers and from his way he's holding the pick and he's phrasing with the left and the right hand, you know, stuff of that is of course more important. But I think it's very important that the pick won't bend. Uh, let me see, um, in a couple of minutes I will get a pick that, that, that's bending. Uh, I have one of those here and then you will see the differences but now I'm just show you the picks that I use this is another one from Wegen that I used when I was younger and this one is very sick this is very cool for rhythm guitar and you hear the difference here it's really it's really awesome it is a very punchy and has a lot of bass notes listen to that one one two three <laughs> sound and I really like that. If you compare it to the thinner one, it's like this. Immediately the thicker one. It's a bit more of, more of, of the bass. This is a pick that I'm playing and it's a pick uh, made by Killy Nonis. <clears throat> a very uh, nice and very good guitar builder from the UK. Killy Nonis guitar. Check out Killy Nonis guitar very cool guy as well and this is the turbo one of the picks that he's selling and it's also very recommendable actually but as I said before on that guitar and the way I'm playing of course the difference won't be so big maybe I would try with a little lick you know when I'm playing stuff like so now I take the bigger wing again now you hear the difference, I think, huh? the Wegen, uh, the, the Killy Nonis pick, and again, the Wegen, the thicker one, and the thinner one, the Big City, This is another one that Killy Mononis made for me and he tried to make that one as thin as possible because his picks are very thick and I like them a bit thinner. So this is made of amber, it sounds like that. There are a lot, this, has, this is a bit warmer I think. I think this one has a little bit too much for my taste, you know, I like the turbo actually better, he made that one for me, so thanks for that Killy, but the turbo is still, you know, the turbo is so great, I really like that one, because this one is also very cool, it's very warm, but it has a bit of string noises that some players adore, but I do, do, don't really like them, it's like this, when you listen carefully you will hear what I mean, like... 
especially on the bass notes. Like this. And this one is a pick that every one of you probably has got. And this is a Dunlop pick, very regular pick. Uh, I think the it's 1.5 millimeters and Birelli plays those and they are very thin for gypsy jazz actually but still sound good but you hear the sound now is more yeah it's a bit more fragile a bit thinner I think those place them with the edge and not with the tip so I absolutely can't do that but for me that doesn't feel comfortable so and these are back actually uh, the picks that I'm using so now let me talk about the guitars this is a my guitar from a German builder and I like that one very much. I got a lot of German guitars actually, but this is not because I like <laughs> but because I like Germany so much. It's just random somehow and I bought these guitars and I really like them. This is pretty new, so it's my new baby. It's a D-hole guitar and in Gypsy Jazz most guitars have this big D-hole that you like you probably noticed and they sound a bit warmer but still very loud with a very with a big punch you know gypsy jazz guitars are supposed to sound very punchy that means this should be very thin the wood should be very dry and then you got this typical yeah uh, yelling sound that I also like in bluegrass music but that's also that's very typical for gypsy jazz music when you compare that to some guitars that I played on stage that rock music acoustic guitars that rock musician play on stage when they play a ballad or something they are very thick here to prevent feedback and as acoustic guitar they do not really work so I think real acoustic guitars are made here very thin you can hear that and they should sound very yelling and have a lot of uh, natural harmonics and stuff like that like that so you got the punch that you need when playing loudly on acoustic guitar and I think that flamenco players refer to that principle and also gypsy jazz players and also some bluegrass players so this guitar is very nice the neck from the back looks like that the head looks a bit like a Favino guitar something like that it's really I really like it very good guitar and I just I just saw that in a, in a, in a not in a shop but in a, in a, in a workshop and uh, somebody sold it on commission and I really grabbed it and said like I take it I really like it. So the next guitar that I want to show to you is my basic stage guitar and this is this Volkert guitar. Jürgen Volkert is a German luthier as well and I have this guitar because um, Joshua Stefan and Dickmo Schneeberger are probably the most famous endorsers for this kind of guitars and I bought this one because I got it a bit cheaper when I started playing Pomp for Joshua Stefan. So this one sounds also very good it has a lot of dynamics, so the difference when you play it very soft it sounds very nice. But when you really um, punch it, it's still working. So this is what a gypsy guitar has to do, you know, it's like... good both ways also the pump sounds great on that guitar you know when you got like like how it looks you know it's a nice work anyway so this is the microphone that I'm using for all my guitars it's the AT Audio Technica uh, and it's really it's it's an inside the whole mic 
and it gives the natural sound, but I have two plugins and the other one is for the big tone pickup so that when the stage is big and there is a danger for feedbacks, I can um, play most, I can catch most of the sound from big tone pickup. So it also sounds very good. I think it's available for, I don't know, 150 bucks, something like that. Don't really remember. So, and this is very, uh, I recommend to do both like this because then it's easier on stage when you have to uh, somehow fix the mic every time with this thin cable this can really cause problems technical problems and it can get on your nerves you might you could step on the small cable stuff like that and so this is a very good option so the next guitar that I want to show you I play with an amplifier amplifier and uh, the amplifier that I'm using is a Fender RP RP Junior amplifier. And I really like that one because it's an old tube amp with only volume and tone, and it it sounds um, yeah to my ears it sounds a bit old school, and it's uh, not so expensive than other amps. Like for example, if you want to for the Pêche à la Mouche, the Django amp, Pêche à la Mouche French for fly fishing, and if you want to for this amp I think it's 1400 bucks something like that which is if you're not so uh, if you don't have so much money this is pretty much so and the RP Junior from Fender does a good job for something around 500 bucks and I play this guitar because it's not a jungle guitar this is a Höfner guitar it's a kind of it looks like an archtop guitar but these guitars were built um, as full acoustic guitars actually for jazz music and I have a, a Du Armand or Du Armand, Du Armand a pickup here, floating pickup that sounds very nice. And this guitar is very good when I play because I play a lot of gigs also where people are sometimes not listening all the time. You know when you play background gigs, wedding parties, stuff like that. That guitar can be heard anyway, even if people are talking, and even in small clubs where the people are not so you know not only listening this is a good choice and from the from the view of the artist i just like the tone so it sounds like a bit like the late jungle record when you set the guitar louder you will hear the sweet spot it comes somehow around this I will try like now you will hear now it's different now it's even <laughs> This is a good option if you're not a gypsy player, hundred percent. If you also play other styles and this is just a hobby for you, then a guitar like this will absolutely do, because you can play gypsy jazz on it. But of course, it's also working as a jazz guitar. It's a bit out of tune. No, don't mind. Also a nice normal guitar and a normal jazz guitar and I like that one and by the way it also sounds good without amplification that means when you're on the street or playing in the garden it still works with a pick plate like has a good acoustic guitar as well but of course when you play solo then the sound is a bit thin very nice guitar I like that one so the last guitar that I will introduce to you is a very strange guitar it is my camping guitar and this is a very cheap gypsy guitar model that you can afford maybe when you start and you just want to sneak in it's an APC guitar from Portugal I think and this one is actually okay I have to be honest I don't want to offend anybody but of course it is a very cheap guitar and it sounds cheap as well but it has something that a normal Western guitar has not and so therefore 
mm. where you want to have a camping guitar and you know some <laughs> probably somebody steals it or you're drunk and step into it whatever you know it's not that, uh, that, that bad at all it's not it's not it's not the end of the world this one will sound like that i will play again some changes for you no bass in there but still you can make use of it so I like that one and I got that one because it, it, it got a little mistake here in the neck so I got that one for 150 bucks or something like that I think the original price is 260 so that's not so much money and you can start with that. There are some other beginner's guitars that I don't have here. This is, for example, a um, Zaga Gitan guitar. There are some guitars for 500 bucks. To be honest, I don't really recommend them because 500 bucks is still, yeah, for people like me, I do not have, you know, money all the I do not have so much money, you know, I have to save money. I have to look, look what I buy. And I think everybody should do that, you know, don't buy crap and I, I, I don't like these in-between guitars you know you buy a good guitar or you buy a very cheap guitar you know but these in-between guitars are guitars that you will resell and that will don't satisfy you and still they are pretty expensive so I had a Zaga Gitan for a thousand euro this is the one that I play in my older videos that was pretty good actually but it was of course also I think it's now available for 1100 euro something like that so these are the guitars. When I play on stage, uh, my amplification system, I use the RER compact amp, as I said, with Audio Technica mic and a big tone pickup. And this is basically what I do. This is basically all of my equipment. I got some other advice for you. When you uh, when you're new, I would say you know picks are not so expensive. So buy some of the Gypsy picks. You will support the builders who are of course uh, who who would love that. And so you can make a choice, you know, whether it's this or this or this. So Killy Known is, I really recommend that. Or Wegen, Wegen, W-E-G-E-N, Wegen, don't know where it's coming from. And I would also, I would recommend to buy some of the picks. And then when you have an archtop guitar, you can start with the archtop guitar. You can even put uh, new strings on it. When you play your archtop guitars with, um, with the jazz strings, then I would put normal electric guitar strings on it. And the strings that I'm using on my art shop are actually gypsy guitar strings with the strength of uh, 011, so pretty normal. The strings that I'm using are from Argentine. These are the most famous ones. There are also great gypsy guitar strings from the brand of Gali, G-A-L-L-E, L-L-I, sorry, G-A-L-L-I, Gali strings. And um, there are, I think there even exist strings of Manouche picks. Manouche is written M-A-N-O-U-C-H-E. Manouche picks, French word. Jazz Manouche is of course the word for gypsy swing, like that. And there are also from Dadario, which is a very famous brand, I think, also in the States. They also do have gypsy strings that you can um, order online. And I use them, actually, because <laughs> they are very easy available all the time but um, most of the time I have Argentine on my guitars but I also get some packages of um, Dadario strings here. So I hope that video helped you and um, I hope that somehow gave you a overview on Gypsy Jazz equipment. This was Sven Jungbeck for you. See you soon. Bye!